Welcome to the Practice You podcast. My name is Elena Brower. Together, we'll explore and enjoy content and conversations around mastering transitions. In our relations, our wellness, our careers, our families, and especially in our missions and visions. You are invited to learn and love and listen with me. Welcome to Practice You. Welcome back to the podcast. It is episode three, Collecting Difficult Moments. This is really about collecting evidence of the fact that the difficult moment that you are experiencing or have experienced is actually a deep teaching and evidence that it was always coming together. May we all remember this, that we needn't seek evidence of the failure, of the negativity, What we can start to seek is evidence of this truth. It was all, always coming together. And even in the most difficult moments of my life, remembering this, it's seminal in every ancient teaching, has helped me to stand tall and be responsive and responsible for my actions. And I think for all of us, especially at this time, there is so much to rail against. It doesn't matter what side you're on. There's so much fear. There's so much dread. There's so much hatred. Even the Dalai Lama in his most recent book, A Call for Revolution, says, page 24, Do not be discouraged. Your mission is to draw lessons from the errors of the past. All the while developing a dialogue of tolerance and nonviolent communication with those around you. And I feel that this is how we can serve best. When it comes to collecting difficult moments and seeing that every single one of them is in fact a teaching, For us to, within the confines of our own households and hearts, develop a dialogue of tolerance and nonviolent communication is the best way forward. That is for all of us. The Dalai Lama goes on, when you are confronted by violence, you must not give in to the kind of fear that blinds people with bitterness, anger, and a thirst for vengeance. This is hard right now. There are so many current events that could lead us to this kind of bitterness and anger and thirst for vengeance against what has been done wrong. And again, it doesn't matter what side you're on. The call for all of us is to look for evidence that it was always coming together to hold a state of peace within our hearts, to develop a dialogue of tolerance and nonviolence within our own households, and to take the example, as His Holiness noted, from the Norwegian Prime Minister in the wake of the July 2011 terrorist attacks in Oslo and the island of Utøya. I hope I'm saying that correctly. He declared that his government would respond to terror with increased democracy, openness, and tolerance. His Holiness continued on, It is precisely by guarding against internecine hatred that you will become the architects of peace. The day is near when your generation will have consigned war to the ash heap of history. Perhaps when that day comes, you will remember these words. Now is the time to be more gentle with our fear. Now is the time to be more awake to the teaching, more awake to the lesson, more awake to how we can take 
the feeling that we're having about the wrongdoing that's happening in the world and at least apply the solution in our own house and in our own body. How can we be more tolerant? How can we practice nonviolence? How can we look upon the people who are closest to us and continue to believe that there is a teaching in this challenge? I think that is the real question of right now. It's on all of us to find the evidence that even in the worst moments, it was all always coming together.